My name is Ezri, E-Z-R-I. Yeah, that's my rap name, that's my real name, my acting name. But I think Ezra was like a, I don't know, is he like a king or something? So yeah, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, um, which is, I guess, a cool place to be from because it gave me a lot of uh, hard working mentality because Cleveland is like a small city, it has like limited resources as far as like things I'm interested in. Um, and so I guess it um, really molded me as a person to like grind and like how to navigate through situations and mm -hmm. things of that nature, so. To me, my music initially stood just as like a hobby, you know, um, something fun to do in my spare time. Um, and probably like in the beginning, because I started writing music when I was like 12 or so, so like in middle school, I probably just wanted to be like popular for it, you know. But then like, you know, as I continued to grow older, I feel like it transitioned into like a means of like, um, venting or like, you know, therapeutic, you know, something that was therapeutic and something that I also soon realized was beneficial for other people that were listening. Um, and so then it became something that was more serious for me and like more of a passion, I would say probably around like 15, 16. So for me, it's just like, um, it's just something I like to do, you know, like I like to act. I like to direct my own music videos. I like to, um, you know, I'm in control of my own website. Um, I design a lot of my own merchandise, so I like to do a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, but music was definitely like one of my first passions. I mean, I would say I just always like stayed true to myself and, um, you know, I was raised right by my parents. Fortunately, like we lived in the hood in Cleveland, but they made sure like I had necessary resources to create and do stuff that I needed to do to keep my mind, you know, busy and not idle. Um, so um, I feel like a well-mannered kid and um, I feel like I just stayed true to myself. Like very early on, I didn't cuss in my music just because my parents were listening to my music, my little brothers were listening to my music. That, I, I remember that was something notable that everybody brought up to me that I didn't even necessarily realized because I just didn't cuss in my music. But like other people listening will always bring that up to me like, dang, you don't even cuss in your stuff and you still like as raw as everybody else out here and stuff. So um, I noticed that just staying true to myself and being me was what was working for me. And so that's what I still do to this day, you know. Recently, my management made me kind of get more artisty with it. Like, you know, made it more like look like I'm like a artist or whatever. But I just use it as like a regular thing, you know. Um, sometimes I might use it too much. Sometimes I even delete the apps because it consumed too much of my time. But I would say I just constantly post like what I got going on, like, you know, music related or not music related, just regular everyday life stuff, you know, being on a tour bus and, well, I guess that's music related, but <laughs> I mean, I guess music just I consumes my life, day, shit, you so know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I just post like as like a regular person on there, really. So, yeah. you know, they get what I give them, you know. So my first ever song I ever wrote was um, for my cousin's like Sweet Sixteen. She was uh, well, my mom suggested that like I write her a poem or something because I was always good at writing, um, like good in English class and stuff like that. So my mom suggested I write her like a poem or something as a gift. <laughs> and I decided to just write a whole song. I don't know why, but like, I was super inspired by Soldier Boy at the time. And like, he had like this whole YouTube craze going and stuff. Yeah. So I wrote a whole song uh -huh. um, and performed it at her birthday party. Oh, nice. And my whole family at that point was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like you gotta keep going or whatever. So then my mom started booking me studio sessions and Really my mom, like, you know, she became like my manager, I guess, at that point. Yeah, she was booking me studio sessions and, you know, driving me and booking me shows and, you know, making sure everything got done. So, you know, answering emails, everything. So my mom, 100%, is like the, my number one supporter. 
And then, you know, of course, my family, my, my father. It took him a little minute because, you know, at first he was like, you know, whatever. But now he's like the loudest one in the crowd. So, <laughs> That's great. you know, definitely um, my family, though, for sure. I mean, like I said, like, what works for me is just staying true to myself. So, like, you know, not fabricating your lifestyle too much to try to fit into what you feel is cool or, you know, what you feel everybody else thinks is cool. Yeah, and staying consistent, really, because that's one thing I noticed, like, where I fall short or have fallen short in the past is, like, I would have, like, you know, momentum going and then it would take me a while to drop, like, new content. So now I'm, like, learning. I took a, a little while to just, like, stack on content and music and videos and everything. And, you know, just to hit people back to back with stuff because now is like the first time I feel like maybe the first time in music where it's like quantity over quality, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I feel like the only way to compete against that is to just, you know, still give people the quantity, but just more quality than what everybody else is giving. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's tricky, but yeah. Um. After this tour, um, just right back to music, creating and dropping. Basically what I just was telling you, you know, consistency. Um, shooting more videos, more songs recorded. Um, just really working. It's headphones, 100%. You know, because you don't have much personal space on a tour bus when you got, like, when it's 10 people on the bus, so it's like, you know, headphones are just like, take me to, to my own little place, you feel me? I fall asleep with headphones. Like, I can't sleep unless I got headphones in. iPhone, headphones, you know, whatever. It don't gotta be nothing fancy. It was dope, you know, New York is like a, a weird crowd because you could tell they're listening, you know what I'm saying? They might not put their hands up and like wave from side to side and everything, but you know, once you look past that, you can see that people are really like paying attention to what you're saying and stuff, so. Um, it was dope. It was a good like energy for sure. Um, one of the best out of the whole tour, no doubt. And then you know, seeing people that I knew there, some knew the words to some of the songs. So man, that's always a good feeling. Just because you know, at least you know that your music is resonating with these people. Because you know, in order to be able to spit the words, you know what I'm saying, they have to really listen to it, you know, more than one time. <laughs> so it just lets you know, you know that. And what you're trying to do is possible at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? You see it, you see the music spreading and, you know, it's just humbling to know that, like, it's really in your power, like, in your control to, you know, how far you want to take this shit, you know, so. Like I said, stay true to yourself. Love more than you hate, you know what I'm saying? Try to make more better choices than negative choices. We all know right from wrong, so. Um, just try to be more controlled of the choices you make, you know what I'm saying? And more considerate of everybody else and other people. And yeah, just love. <laughs>